This is episode three, AKA the cupcake episode. If you missed episode two and one, go ahead and pop back over there. Feel free to watch those. Maybe give me a like while you're there. Hit the subscribe button. You can share me with your friends if you want, but let's get started. So today we're just gonna be making some really simple zombie cupcakes. They're just gonna be made out of a vanilla cake. They're gonna be made out of a simple cream cheese frosting with a little bit of white chocolate pudding in the middle. Um, it's all really simple. I'm actually gonna go ahead and leave the ingredients um, in the description box. Measurements, steps, everything that you're gonna need to follow along with me or to do this on your own time, of course, whatever. Um, I did wanna tell you guys a quick story though, how I came up with this idea for zombie cupcakes. A little scary um, story popped into my head. So it was late one October when a lady decided to go for a jog after dinner. Then she realized that there was a man following behind her, not too close, but close enough to make her uncomfortable. So she decides to jog a little faster to hurry up and put some distance between her and this mysterious jogger. But out of her peripheral vision, she noticed that the jogger is basically staying on her heels. So by this time, she's running. She's only like a block away from home. She's sprinting. She hurries up, gets home, goes inside, turns around, closes the door, and locks it. She looks out the peephole, and she sees the man. The man followed her home. She noticed that he seemed to be uh, looking a little gross, was decaying a bit. His skin had like a bluish, greenish tint and so she went and ran over to the phone she says oh, i'm gonna call the cops see if they can come help me out but she puts the phone up to her ear and she realizes no dial tone her phone lines have already been cut so she hurries up and she runs upstairs into her walk-in closet she grabs a gun she goes back stairs, downstairs with the gun and she tells the intruder through the front door, leave, I have a loaded gun. But when she looks back out the people, he is gone. So quickly she thinks to herself, what other exits and entrances are there in my house? So she darts to the back door and the jogger, mysterious jogger is in her kitchen. She points the gun at him and says, I, I will shoot you, leave my house. But he just keeps continuing on towards her, groaning a little bit, like, oh. She says, I'm definitely gonna do it. I need you to leave right now. But he just keeps saying, oh. She even pops off a warning shot to the left of him, bang. But he just keeps going, oh. Until finally he pounces on her, taking a bite out of her neck, and she's able to shoot him right in the head, bang. He goes, Ah, brains. And then she got the inspiration to make these cupcakes and I got the inspiration to make these cupcakes. So let's get started. So it's really simple. Um, I haven't made a lot of cupcakes from scratch. Today's gonna be my second time. I tried to do this yesterday, but it didn't turn out very good. So we're gonna do it again. So uh, first thing we're gonna do is cream our butter and sugar. I um, put about a half a cup of sugar, uh, portioned it out into this bowl, and we're just gonna put it into our mixing bowl. Now, I took this out um, about three or four hours ago so that it can get nice and soft. Um, you want it to be like in the middle. You don't want it to be too cold, but obviously, you don't want it to be um, like an oily, goopy mess, like if you were to put it in the microwave and just melt it. So <clears throat> this is pretty good. So you're just gonna put that in the bowl. And then uh, next, obviously, you're gonna go ahead and add in your sugar. I have my pre-portioned amount of sugar that you'll be able to find in the description box. I'm just gonna pour in here. And you're just gonna take, you can use a whisk, you can, I'm using just a hand mixer. You're just gonna put it on a really uh, low speed at first. And you're just gonna see the sugar and butter start to come together. And that's all you really want is for them to combine. At the end of the day, this is one step in um, a you know four or five step process. Um, so you just want it to be pretty well combined. 
see that how it's kind of uh, pasty I missed a bit there let me get that in there awesome so now I'm gonna go ahead and enter in some other ingredients um, this does call for two medium to large eggs so I do have two medium eggs here and I'm just gonna go ahead and put those in there all right very easy um, at this time you can go ahead and um, put in your vanilla as well which I'm gonna do this one calls for I think a tablespoon and a fourth or something but I'm gonna I mean sorry a teaspoon and a fourth but I'm gonna put two teaspoons because it's vanilla cupcakes <laughs> that was a little bit that was a lot so I'm only gonna put a little bit more at the end of the day it's vanilla cupcakes and this is vanilla so it's okay but hopefully you like vanilla or else th these specific cupcakes aren't for you. <laughs> All right, so we're just gonna go ahead and mix that in there now. And I'm just gonna go ahead and grab a spatula so I can uh, get the ingredients off the side and just make sure that everything's well incorporated. Put that off to the side here. See how that's starting to look a little smooth again? Batter-esque. A little bit like how the batter is gonna look. Perfect. And so now that you have all your creaming together, you can start to add in some of your dry elements. So I have um, my, I wanna call this powder, but flour here, sorry. Um, and the reason I was thinking powder is because now I have my baking powder. I'm just going to go ahead and combine in there. And I'm just going to take a really tiny whisk and go ahead and whisk it all together. Really simple. All right. And now that that's good and together, we're going to start pouring it in the bowl. So I'm only going to pour half of this at first on low let it kind of mix up and get in there it's not imperative that you uh do too good right now because we already have we have a whole nother half to put in um and at this time in between the halves i'm gonna go ahead and put my milk so a lot of recipes and a lot of bakers will say buttermilk which is obviously preferable but what I did was I put a little bit more um, butter in the mixture and then I just used regular milk because I didn't have buttermilk on hand it goes bad really quickly and so I don't really keep it in my fridge I buy it and then I use it all so regular milk will do just fine go ahead and um, you're going to obviously stir it back up a bit more and you're going to go ahead and put in the other half of the flour and just mix that up completely. All right. And so now that that's all combined, it's, um, it's kind of a medium thickness. So, um, hold on one sec. I just do that to get all the batter off the, or as much as I can off the whisks. Um, so yeah, so I'll show you guys this. It's kind of like, it, it just looks good. It's a good cupcake batter. It's a bit thicker. Um, I've seen some really runny ones, but it's, it's, you know, pretty simple. So that's the batter, but because these are, um, zombie cupcakes, we're going to go ahead and make the cake green. So I just have some really simple, this is just, um, Wilton, uh, brand food coloring. Oh, I look, I have that on my finger. <laughs> That's what aprons are for. Um, this is Kelly Green, like the Eagles, or like the Eagles used to be, rather. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, take a little toothpick or two toothpicks, and I'm going to go ahead and put the green color in here. Um, the Wilton brand, from my experience, is pretty concentrated, and so a little goes a really long way. We're definitely going to find that out when we um talk about the frosting that i made i already made the frosting and the pudding just to kind of make the video a little shorter i don't want you guys here for an hour so <laughs> uh, we'll talk about those though um so i'm just gonna put the green in here i just have a couple of toothpicks and i'm just gonna decide you know how i feel about that i'm gonna put a little bit more because these are zombie cupcakes it can be a little bit greener obviously 
there's no limit to the greenness because it's a zombie and they're fictional anyways. So perfect, I have that in here. Go ahead and throw these toothpicks away. Put the cat back on because I'm terribly clumsy and I'll freaking put this whole thing on the ground. All right, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and mix it back up and see how I feel about the green. Yeah. So now that I'm feeling pretty comfortable with the color green that I have, Look how pretty that came out. It's like a look of the Irish green. This is shamrock color, I love it. Um, we're just gonna go ahead and uh, put it into some cupcake papers, obviously in our cupcake tin. So of course I have black ones, because as you can see, black is my favorite color. So I'm just gonna pop it in like so. You guys don't need a tutorial for this part. So there we go. All right, and now I'm just gonna take this cupcake scoop it's like the perfect size to get the right amount of batter in the papers and I'm just gonna scoop it in it's okay if it's a little bit over full because at the end of the day these are gonna be brains which are already um, convex and so you want them to be kind of circular on the top um, a normal cupcake is probably about three-fourths full so if you go a little bit over that, that would be perfect. Wow, what the heck? Well, that was easy. So as you can see in the bowl, we had to use every single drop of the batter. Um, some of these are filled up to the perfect amount. I would say this one is awesome because it's gonna go ahead and expand and rise and become a dome. Uh, for traditional cupcakes, you don't really want that. You want a flat surface and you're gonna make the frosting into the dome shape or into like a, a reverse cone shape. But this time, because these are gonna be brains and brains are already this way, they're like a half sphere, where, or rather the brains that people make, the traditional ones, not our real ones. But anyways, um, these are gonna be perfect. Uh, this one I would say might be a little bit under, but no big deal. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop this into the oven. I did preheat the oven to 350 degrees before this video. That's what you guys heard in the beginning. That beeping noise was an indicator that the oven is ready for the cupcakes. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop those in. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and leave those cupcakes in the oven for about 18 to 20 minutes or until you can put a toothpick in and it comes back out clean. Really simple. I'm gonna go ahead and let those bake and then I'm gonna let them cool and I'll be right back to decorate. Right, so it's been about, I don't know how long, but the cupcakes are cool and it's time to decorate. So this is how they came out. Some of them are actually really decent and I'm pleased with how they baked and how they came out. So like I said, I already made um, the frosting yesterday because I tried to do this video yesterday and it didn't work out. So all this um, frosting is, is really simple. It's just a stick of softened cream cheese um, like a cup or so of um, powdered sugar and um, some vanilla. You can also throw some butter in there or you can really mix it up and do whatever you want. And then I put a little bit of that rose pink uh, food coloring. Like I said, I use Wilton brand. You can use whatever the heck brand you want. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put this in my piping bag so that I can show you guys the decoration. Um, also, uh, yesterday I made this pudding as well. It's coming apart a bit, so I'm gonna go ahead and stir it back together. But we're gonna use this as the filling. Um, I grabbed a box of Hershey brand um, white chocolate um, pudding, and that's what I used, and then I just colored it green, and I put a couple of drops of yellow in there too, just to kind of make it a different color than the cupcakes and make it look kind of slimy. All right. So, uh, bear with me a second, let me grab a whisk. 
<laughs> okay, I'm just gonna use this tiny whisk, I guess. My other whisk is in the um, sink and I'm not about to wash it on camera. <laughs> All right, so there you go. It's back to like a pudding type consistency there. Awesome. So I got this really cool gadget off Amazon. It's a cupcake corer. So all you're gonna do is put it in the cupcake. You're gonna twist it to get it free from the cupcake and then it pops right back out and it leaves this nice little hole. So let me grab a spoon. I just went ahead and grabbed a little teaspoon and all you're literally gonna do is take it and put it in the middle. Pretty simple. Obviously it's okay if a little bit gets um, out of the hole because we're about to cover it. So I'm just gonna take this spatula from before and take a little bit of frosting and go ahead and put it on top. All right, so this looks pretty good to me. Like I said, it's just the base, so no big deal. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my typing bag and we're gonna start the brain. I always have a hard time holding these because first of all, it's super overfilled and my hands don't work. But fortunately, the brain is super simple and it's just a bunch of squigglies. So I'm just gonna make a squiggly pattern. All right, and at the end of the day, brains have two sides, so I'm gonna go ahead and restart my pattern over here. And there you go, it kind of looks like a brain. Um, it's gonna look a lot more like a brain once we put um, our fake blood on, but we'll check that out. I'm gonna do one more. I'm gonna take this nice big one and first, of course, make the base like we talked about. Obviously, I maybe a little or spatula would be better for this, but at the end of the day, no big deal. So just the base again. Gonna go ahead and grab my piping bag again and do some more squiggles. So it's just back and forth. You can go the other way. And looks like I got a little bit of solid in there. Oh, doesn't have to be perfect at the end of the day because whose brain is? These are just for zombies to eat after all. Again, leaving a bit of a uh, middle. You can do a mixture of big ones and small ones, whatever you like. And there we go, another brain. I'm gonna do one more just for display. Do some more squiggles. Make sure I'm big and small.
All right, and again, doesn't have to be perfect because we're gonna be putting blood, and again, these are just for zombies. So, um, we need to go ahead and make our fake blood, so I'm gonna obviously put all this stuff to the side. Grab a bowl here. And the blood is really simple because I want it to be. So a lot of um, other people that I saw making fake blood or recipes call for cornstarch and blah, blah, blah. But ours is literally just going to be food coloring and um, corn syrup. So um, there's no need for measurements. I'm not even going to post the measurements because this is really just winging it because it doesn't matter. So I'm just going to put some corn syrup in there. Again, doesn't matter how much. I'm going to go ahead and take the red food coloring, again, Wilton brand. And I'm just going to take two toothpicks so I can get a good amount. And it's already, you can see, turning a little bloody. I'm going to put a very good amount of red in here. And again, I'm just going to take a whisk and whisk that up. Not this one, obviously. This little cute little tiny whisk. It's like a little mouse whisk for ratatouille. And just, you can see it's starting to turn like a really pretty bloody color. But blood, as you all know, is not this bright red color. It has a little bit of a blue undertone from um, it first hitting the oxygen and turning red. And so we're going to add a tiny, and I mean tiny bit of blue to this. So look, I'm only adding this much and I'm probably not even going to add all of that. All right, perfect. Let's see how this works. All right. So see, I really like this color. It's more of like a crimson color. It's more realistic and bloody than that bright red color. Um, Cause at the end of the day, blood just isn't that bright red color. All right. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and um, finish decorating the rest of these cupcakes, set them up that way we can do the final decoration, the gory blood, and I'll be right back. Okay, so now we're done. Some of these brains have tumors or maybe got hit in the head or zombie already started eating them, but this is what we got and they look a little bit like brains. So now let's go ahead and put some freaking blood on them. This is probably the easiest part. Um, I went ahead and put down some saran wrap on my cake stand so that it doesn't get too messy and you're literally you kind of want to be high up, just going to drizzle blood on them. All right, and that's that, folks. That's all there is to it. So these are my bloody zombie brain cupcakes. If you take one here. Peel off the wrapper. It has the inside, the yogurt in, oh, not yogurt, the um, pudding inside. And let me check these out. It tastes pretty good. I want to say thank you so much to my cameraman, my freaking husband, who take this whole thing and helps me eat all these cupcakes. Um, big thank you to you guys for watching this video, especially if you're hearing this, thank you. You've probably been watching for like 15, 20, 60 minutes. I don't freaking know. Thank you so much. Don't forget to like, subscribe, come hang out with me next week. I really want to talk about a horror movie. So if you guys have a scary movie that you love, go ahead and listen in the comments. Maybe I'll pick one of those and we can talk about it next week. Thanks, guys. Bye.